السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Hi everyone, this is Ahlam Al Amri from the General Directorate of Infection Prevention and Control. And today our session will be about infection prevention and control, leading, managing, and acting during emergencies. The outlines of this session will be divided into four main sections. The first one about the art of leadership and all theories uh, related to the leadership. And the second thing, it will be about the building a team and uh, the stages of and activities required uh, in regard of building an effective team. And the third section, it will be about the communication skills at different levels. And finally, the conflict management resolution styles. A difficulty when considering leadership that the main of the uh, theories uh, or reference uh, about the leadership were developed within the business uh, context and it's made it it's difficult to uh, apply it in the healthcare context. In the healthcare sectors, we are dealing with the human being and also we are dealing with different uh, diagnoses and uh, managing uh, different emerging or re-emerging uh, diseases or threats as well as we are dealing with uh, uh, advances in technologies. So that's why the healthcare is the most difficult and chaotic and complex industry to manage today. So all that uh, it's made the modern hospital is the most complex form of human organization ever created. And uh, based on that or accordingly, we need a specific skills in leadership in order to manage uh, these type of sectors effectively. So from the previous slides uh, in the introduction that related to the the context uh, of the healthcare sectors, effective leadership in healthcare is incredibly important, especially when we are considering the modern care. So from the previous introduction, as well as from the title of the session that related to the managing and acting and leading uh, during emergency events, so uh, we have to have a specific skills in the leadership. So we'll start uh, this session or outline about the leadership by defining what's the meaning of leadership and from the photo down here or posted in the uh, slides that's showing that is the leadership is the art of influence leadership is a, a set uh, and a collection of behaviors used to help people align their collective direction to execute strategic plans and strategic goals and to continually renew an organization to be reformed uh, a day uh, by day. It's about guiding and impacting outcomes, enabling group of people to work together. That's why I, 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 I made this uh, um, uh, the font uh, in a bold because it's about it's not about the hard skills, it's about the soft skills that the leader have. So it's that's why it's really important to guide, impact, and enable a group of people to work together to accomplish what they couldn't do when they are working individually. So in this sense, leadership is something you do, not something you are. So I will start this section uh, by one um, uh, of the famous uh, saying by Kurt Lewin. Uh, and Kurt Lewin, by the way, he is a German-American psychologist uh, known um, as a one of the modern pioneers in social and organizational applied psychology in the United States. And uh, Kurt Lewin says that um, there is uh, nothing practical as a good theory. So let's start to explore the main theories in the leadership. Effective leadership is uh, recognized as a key to the success of any organization. And as a brief, uh, brief has mentioned that the leadership is the one of the most complex and multi-dimensional phenomena so and it, uh, it was being studied extensively over many and various uh, years ago and has taken on a greater importance than ever before in today's fast uh, paced uh, environment and actually the researcher have proposed many different definitions and theories of the leadership so uh, we'll start uh, this uh, session by exploring the main theories in the leadership and uh, the first one of them is the great man uh, theory great man theory it's the theory that developed in the 19th century and particularly in 1840s and um, the this particular um, uh, theory 
the core belief of it is that the reader are born, not made or trained. In 1940s, uh, the trade theory have been evolved. And actually, um, the, the trade theory argued that the leaders can be born or made. In other words, that the traits of a successful leaders can be either inherited or acquired through training and practice. In 1950s, uh, the behavior theory have been evolved from the trade theories and assert that the leaders are largely made rather than born and that particular behaviors can be learned to ensure an effective uh, leadership style. Later on, the uh, situational theory in 1960 have been uh, evolved or developed and the name itself suggests that the situation era is focused on a leadership in a particular situation rather than on the traits or behaviors of leaders. And this implies that the leaders must be able to assist the context uh, in, uh, in which uh, they operate and then decide which style will fit the situation best. Later on, the uh, transactional theory have been evolved and it relies on authority to motivate employees. So the leaders here exchange reward of the followers' efforts and punishes who uh, the followers who uh, are failed to meet uh, their uh, goals. And finally, we'll explore the transformational or relationship uh, theory. And this theory, which leaders encourage and inspire and uh, motivate um, their followers. So from the previous uh, exploring uh, uh, and um, an overview of the leadership theories. We have one uh, quote for uh, Ralph Nader that's saying that the function of leadership is to produce more leaders, not more followers. And actually, Ralph Nader is an American political activist, author, and also lecturer, have a different um, influential uh, quotes and uh, articles in related to the leadership. All the previous um, identified uh, theories have been explored in this article and the title of this article about the evolution of leadership theory which is which was released and published in 2020 and you can have an access uh, to this article through this barcode. After the previous introduction about the leadership as a, a term and as an art or as a science as well as um, the theories of leadership. So uh, we went to the, uh, this uh, most important question, who is a leader? So we have to define who is a leader. A leader is uh, often identified by their personality, their behavior and their actions. And uh, they are defined by how they deal with themselves. And here starts uh, with themselves because if you understand your, the, yourself, and your um, actions or your uh, feelings and have a high level of emotional intelligence, accordingly, you will understand others' feelings and will deal with them effectively. And as well as will deal with the environment around you. So it's really important as a leader to understand yourself first and then others after that, the environment and the context uh, around you. Effective leaders take a personal interest in the long-term development uh, uh, in comparing to the short-term of their employees. And they use a tactic and other social skills to encourage employees to achieve their best. It's not about being nice or understanding. Actually, we are not looking for the leaders who are nice or understanding. In other hands, it's about tapping into individual motivations in the interest of uh, furthering an organization-wide goal and reaching the strategic uh, goal and objectives. It's really important and significant, and particularly in the field of infection prevention and control, the infection prevention and control leader should seek the continuous, uh, continuously improve the implementation of the IBC programs and all related core components. So as a leader, you will use um, a soft skills in, in your uh, leadership skills to influence a multimodal strategies 
And based on WHO's, uh, there is a multimodal strategies that uh, to ensure the effective implementation of the infection prevention and control program. The, uh, we have first built a system, including the infrastructures. Uh, and this uh, system will support the IBC uh, practices of compliance and implementation. And then we have to teach others about this uh, IBC uh, in this system. And later on, we have to check if your organization and your healthcare workers, for example, they are doing the right thing at the right time. And later on, we have to sell it in, uh, to others and keep them interested and motivated in adopting and maintaining an excellent infection prevention and control practices and measures. And finally, we have to live it by embedding excellent IBC practices across your organization cultures. And we can mm, use this um, core components in any program, for example, hand hygiene programs or any improvement project related of, uh, to ensure the implementation of the infection prevention and control program as a vital role. So uh, this is a simple quiz related to the previous slide related to the core components of infection prevention and control program. So uh, which element of the multimodal strategy support this task? And the task is audit and monitor progress of facility infection prevention and control pl uh, plan. So uh, all the choices, build it or teach it, check it, sell it, and live it. So here we go. The answer is check it. After the brief uh, introduction about the first outline of, uh, of today's session, uh, which is about the, the importance of leadership uh, as an art and as a skills uh, in order to lead and manage and act during uh, infection uh, control, prevention and control emergencies. So uh, the second outline will be about building a team. It's really important to have an effective team well constructed before um, any uh, uh, emergency or events in order uh, for the leader to be um, manage the situation effectively. So Henry Ford says that coming together is a beginning, keeping together is a progress, but working together is a success. So uh, first of all, we have to define the, the term uh, team. So uh, this slide, we are uh, comparing the, the definition of group uh, in verses to the team. So a group is, uh, from the photo here, you can see that the group are a number of people or things that are located close together or are considered or classed uh, together. But in the other hand, um, the team uh, are a number of persons associated together in a work or activity. So teaming, uh, that's mean coming together as a team to achieve um, a common goal. So we need from the team or the main purpose is to uh, power with, not uh, power over. So teamwork is really important when you are leading and managing uh, and dealing with the emergency uh, threats or, or infectious uh, events. So the teamwork is the ability to work together to achieve um, a common vision and also its ability to direct individual accomplishment toward the organizational objectives. It's the fuel that allows common people to attain uncommon results. Actually, when you are uh, uh, working as a team, will um, achieve uncommon results that it was uh, be unexpected because we have a different skills, we have a different um, uh, performance, and as a team, we'll, be, we'll do or perform our optimal. After providing you um, an introduction about the uh, team and the teamwork, uh, we have to explore the stages of the uh, teamwork. Actually, the Prost Talkman, is uh, educational psychologist, um, uh, developed a uh, uh, particular stages uh, or steps of the team uh, development and uh, in order to uh, the team work effectively to contribute and achieve uh, the team outcomes they have to work um, uh, together in a way uh, that um, achieve the common goals required for them and this is not happened automatically it must be happened uh, in stages started from forming. So the forming is the initial uh, stage in the process of putting the structure of the team uh, together. Uh, after that, it's coming the storming and the storming here at uh, the stage begins to occur as the process of organizing uh, the task and process surfaces, interpersonal uh, conflicts uh, may happen here and the hostility uh, may be um, appear. Uh, later on, uh, the, the team uh, will um, 
move toward the norming and in this stage the team members are creating a new ways of doing and being together and uh, they have um, a common understanding uh, as the a group develops cohesion and leadership changes from one uh, teammate in charge to a shared uh, leadership later on the team is um, moving to the performing and here is the true interdependence is taking place and the norm of this stage of a group development and the, the team is flexible as individuals and adapt to meet the needs of other team members and this is highly productive stage uh, both in personally and uh, professionally way later on and the last stage is the adjourning and typically here the team members are ready to leave and course termination causing a significant change to the team structure and the membership The demanding situations and crises you face over the course of your career are likely to be the moments that define who you are as a leader and potentially who you are as a person. How you act in these scenarios can impact how your employees and your team and co-workers remember you. The previous slide leads us to, this, uh, to the current uh, slide, which is leading under stress. And we cannot uh, explain and provide any skill uh, in leading and acting and managing during the emergency events unless we are uh, explaining the importance of a specific uh, skill that required when we are leading under stress. Research shows that it's common for the leaders to react poorly in high stressful situations. Specifically, 53% become more close-minded and controlling during time of crisis instead of open and curious, and a further of 43% become angrier and more heated. And this is give us only a 4% that they are acting um, appropriately in this type of event. So accordingly, uh, we have a specific strategies that we have to implement when you are leading or acting or managing during an emergency event. And particularly because these events are always it could um, it let us under stress. So the first strategy or approach that we have to um, implement that we have to wait till act. So a leader is someone who responds to a situation in a calm way and with a well thought out plan and before you jump to the head first into the problem solving and conclusion take a deep breath and pause to collect your thoughts and assess the situation with a clear mind the second strategy that we have uh, to be followed uh, as a leader uh, during the uh, leading under a stressful situation and particularly when you are leading or acting or managing any emergency events uh, or threat and you have to build a strong support system a great leaders always have a people around them who understand how to retain a grounded calm presence it's important they have advisor who are calm as well in, in order to uh, managing and leading and acting effectively during uh, the situations the third strategy that we have to understand the reality of the situation. So it's really crucial to recognize the reality of situation and acknowledge your limitations during these crises, no matter how difficult that may be. Realizing that in the heat of the moment, nothing an individual leader can do um, can solve the whole situation. And here is the, uh, an ideal example for this uh, particular statement that during COVID-19, we know that the pandemic is happening and occurrence all over the world. So it's really important to understand the reality of situation to um, avoid any frustration that the leader can be feel. So the third outline of today's session that is the importance of the communication when you are leading or acting or managing during emergency events. So building effective communication at all levels of the organization is really critical. One of the main significant skills that the leader has to be um, uh, obtained during uh, leading and acting and managing during emergency events is the communication skills. Jim Rohn uh, said that if you just communicate, you can get by, but if you communicate skillfully, you can work miracles. 
one of the main um, communication level is communicating across. So at this level, you are often communicating with peers, stakeholders, clients, or others who are at your same level or position level, and you actively collaborate with them. So this is one of the levels you likely spend a lot of time when you are communicating with them during acting or leading or managing any emergency event. Communicating up. So it's really important to communicate to the leaders or those more senior in your organization than you. So you have to remember here the purpose of communicating to them and there may be a few reasons. So maybe they need to be aware of what's going on to make a strategic decision and you are reporting progress on a strategic initiative. And here you have to be careful that don't give them a further details, only the key points that you need or require your support in making decision on them. The third level of communication is communicating down. And here it doesn't mean that talking down to anyone. It's just a way of thinking about communicating with those you lead and support. And particularly here, a good example of that, your employees or co-workers or your team. The last outline of today's session is about managing conflict. And usually during the emergency, often uh, the emergency itself trigger uh, for the conflict. And we have uh, to deal with this conflict uh, through a specific resolution styles in order to um, resolve the conflict effectively during this type of events. The term conflict is usually defined as disagreement within oneself or differences uh, or dispute among persons that has potential to cause harm. And it is uh, inevitable and may occur in any professions, including healthcare. It could be among any group of healthcare professionals or between a patient and any of the member of the healthcare system. Usually conflict is occurring or happening when introducing a systematic change, such as introducing a new guideline or a new protocol or new policy, conflict at this time may arise. So people who were comfortable with the old routine may, may feel uncomfortable having to learn a new approach or a new system or adopting a new strategies. And this may result in challenges from different members of the team. Here is why the conflict resolution is really important skill uh, among the leaders. So well-managed conflict can lead to the discovery of broader perspectives or the identification of constructive changes as well as opportunities to learn and improve the communications, process, and interactions. By contrast, if we are mismanaged and misleading the conflict can undermine the creation or maintenance of a psychologically dis distressed and also unsafe environment. The previous uh, introduction about the conflict lead us about the importance and significance and why we have to follow a specific conflict resolution and why the conflict resolution is really important. So usually the conflict uh, can be disruptive and at worst situation can be also destructive. So when it's erupt, it's really hard to control. Why? Because the emotion is run high during conflict blocking the path um, to the rational solution and the logic uh, thinking. So conflict resolution is really important key skill for the leader because when people experience a conflict, much of their energy goes into emotions related to those conflicts. Another uh, reason why the conflict is really important because some emotions commonly associated with conflict include fear, anger, distrust, rejection, defensiveness, hopelessness and stress. Another reason also conflict resolution is really significant that because people involved in heavily continuous conflict are likely to experience a wide range of psychological and physical health problems, including the weak uh, or weakened immune system or depression. So consequently, it's really important to have a specific resolution style uh, in regard of conflict. So individuals have a different predominant styles when they are dealing and handling conflict. Having awareness of our own inherent tendency to manage conflict in a certain way can be valuable in helping us manage the team interactions more effectively and particularly during the emergency situation. Each conflict resolution style 
offers advantages and disadvantages, and some are better suited to certain situation than others. There are various tools and instruments uh, developed for the conflict resolution. And this slide showing one of the um, uh, most famous instruments for the conflict resolution. Uh, it's called TKI, uh, which is um, uh, the abbreviation of the, the two researchers who developed the instrument. Uh, and uh, they were uh, Kenneth Thomas and Raph Kelman. That's why it's called TKI uh, as a stand for Thomas and Kelman instrument for uh, explaining and exploring the approaches and the methods uh, for uh, resolving any conflict between the team members. As we described in the previous slide, uh, that we mentioned that the Thomas Kelman conflict uh, mood or instrument has uh, five modes. And we can uh, see here in this slide that if we are going to the uh, left uh, above, going above uh, axis, that means we are really concerning about our own uh, needs and being more assertive. While if we are going to the down uh, right axis, uh, that means we are focusing or concerning of others' needs and being more cooperative. So in each um, uh, type or resolution or style that they have a specific advantage and disadvantage. So let's start with the competing. So in the competing, that means I'm always I'm, I'm here I'm defending about my side and that's why I'm right and you are wrong. So here, because I'm going above, so that means I'm really concerning about my own needs and uh, re um, uh, uh, regardless of the other's um, concern or needs. So here I'm being more assertive or more assertiveness. So while in the avoidings, that means we are both of us, we are um, neglecting uh, the arguing or the conflict here. So that means both sides, they are lows and avoiding the whole conflict and that's why it's coming in the bottom low low in the assertiveness side and as well as low in the cooperative uh, ness side that means i'm not concerned uh, about the others needs and also i'm not concerned about my own needs while in the compromising uh, mood that means we are win to win but it's a 50 50 chance so uh, here we are uh, finding a, a middle ground or a middle solution, but we are not completely um, resolving the conflict. While in the accommodating, that means um, uh, when you are saying the others, you are win or you are right, while I'm wrong. So here, I'm really focusing on the other concern or other um, needs and being more cooperative and, um, and neglecting my own um, needs. And the last mode is collaborating here. We are uh, working together and finding uh, a full uh, resolution of the conflict and both we are win. And that's why we are more focusing in our own needs while also we are focusing on the other needs. Uh, after explaining and exploring the all uh, outlines required for this session, and uh, this is slide showing for you one of the really useful and insightful uh, virtual online courses that developed by WHO in regard of leadership and program management in infection prevention and control. And you can access this course through the barcode. And finally, you will get the certificate required for improving your skills and knowledge and um, as well as your competence in regard of leadership uh, which is related to the infection prevention and control program. In conclusion, leadership is an important part of any successful infection prevention and control program. And it's the tool for managing any crisis and emergency events. And all the uh, previous uh, mentioned outlines and in this session and skills can affect positive change in, in any IBC team other leaders as well as other healthcare workers and to maintain a sustainable IBC programs. It's okay that you are not perfect during any stressful situation, but remember that stress should be a powerful driving force, not an obstacle. Thank you so much for listening to this session. And if you have any question, do not hesitate kindly to contact us at any time. Thank you so much.